with us on link we have Eric Kinman. I, I leave the word to you, Eric. Thank you. Thank you, Linus. Thank you for the introduction. So my name is Eric Kinman. I'm the CEO of Abliva. And I will talk today about our strategy focused on primary mitochondrial disease and our lead programs K1333 and NV354. Abliva is a company um, that has a near pivotal rare disease asset with blockbuster uh, potential. We're focused on primary mitochondrial diseases in which mitochondria, uh, who are the powerhouse of cells are dysfunctional. The reason we are actually approaching a pivotal study with K1333 is the positive feedback that we received from the FDA and the decision by the board to actually move into that uh, recommended pivotal um, trial. Uh, very interestingly, we also announced this morning uh, positive feedback also from the UK MHRA regulatory uh, body, uh, further supporting um, our plans to move into a pivotal study with K1333. In addition, uh, we have uh, a second program, NV354, which is expected to be in the clinical and clinical development uh, 2021 next year. And we have Hadian as a new life science specialist investor uh, as well. We're listed on the Stockholm Nasdaq Stock Exchange, a small cap list, and we have a market cap of uh, 240 to 250 Swedish crowns, million Swedish crowns. So the question is, why are mitochondria so important then? Well, these are uh, small um, cell bodies, uh, bodies in the cells, um, in all um, the cells in the body with the exception of red blood cells. Uh, they convert nutrients and the energy of nutrients and oxygen into energy that the cells need. And when these mitochondria um, do not function, they cause cell death and uh, organ uh, failure. In primary mitochondrial disease, the focus of um, our company, uh, there are genetic mutations that lead to dysfunctional mitochondria. These diseases are devastating diseases with severe symptoms and continuous deterioration. Uh, they can affect all um, organs since uh, mitochondria are basically everywhere. Uh, and there are no approved medicines for systemic primary mitochondrial disease. These diseases are orphan indications, which means that uh, uh, regulatory support is more available. Um, the documentation need is smaller than for common diseases. Um, and because of that, uh, the time to market is shorter and also the cost uh, to market. And generally speaking, these type of pro programs have a higher success rate as well. And well on the market uh, with an approval of um, the orphan drug and an orphan status, there is an added protection to uh, the uh, patent protection in that there is an exclusivity 10 years in Europe and seven years in the US. And the likelihood of receiving a premium price is substantially higher for these type of indications as well. These diseases often debut at an early age and leads to, to uh, premature death. This is illustrated by some of these uh, mitochondrial diseases where Lay syndrome is the focus of um, our NV354 programs. These patients on average die uh, before the age of five. And for the K1333 program, the most common mutation is uh, uh, mitochondrial mutation 3243. And the patients in this, these, um, with these mutations on average die before the age of 35. So KL1333 is a first-in-class disease-modifying treatment uh, where the aim is to improve the lives of patients with primary mitochondrial disease. We're focusing on two spectrum disorders, MELAS-MID and KSS-CPO. Uh, these diseases uh, lead to severe symptoms, continuous worsening of the symptoms throughout life. Uh, these patients have severe fatigue. They have muscle weakness leading to disabilities and exercise intolerance. And they also have a difficult to treat mitochondrial diabetes. The estimate of the amount of patients um, are, is about 40,000 in uh, the US and Europe. 
And if you add to this um, the average price of orphan drugs, which is some 150,000 US dollars um, per patient per year, um, or um, uh, we believe even higher than that, uh, and you uh, anticipate us taking a substantial part of this market, obviously there is a blockbuster potential for uh, KL1333. K1333 increases NAD plus levels. Uh, in dysfunctional abnormal mitochondria, the levels of NAD plus are low. Uh, this leads to organ dysfunction and disease uh, deterioration. And what K1333 does is it normalizes the ratio between NADH and NAD plus. And in doing that, improves the short and long term energy status. It, um, increases the levels of ATP, which is the energy source of the cells. And it also induces uh, uh, mitochondrial biogenesis, that, that is uh, it production of new and healthy mitochondria. And by doing that, it also um, prevent, prevents uh, further disease uh, deterioration. We have strong preclinical data supporting uh, the concept. And there is also from other groups, um, a clinical proof of concept. There is a um, Finnish study uh, showing that these patients have actually, in fact, lowered levels of NAD+. And when you increase the levels by providing uh, a B vitamin, which is uh, a building block of NAD+, um, the patients not only get an increased level of NAD+, but they also increase their muscle strength. Um, there is another study where um, uh, idebenone is used, which is a weaker NAD plus uh, modulator. And in this case, these patients actually get an improvement when, when it comes to their fatigue as well. The treatment is intended as a chronic um, oral treatment. Uh, we're currently running a phase one uh, AB study where the patient portion has been initiated. Um, we have dosed four out of eight patients in that study focused on safety and pharmacokinetics for these patients, but we're also looking at biomarkers and functional measures. And we're busy planning now for the pivotal phase two, three studies uh, planned to start next year. These are, this is a summary of the activities going on when it comes to the clinical development. In par parallel to this, we're also doing um, production of clinical trial material. We have done the single ascending dose, the multiple ascending dose in healthy volunteers. And uh, we're now looking to start a patient, uh, fatigue patient interview study to validate our endpoints, uh, a patient registry study to, clo to study close to the patient categories that we will include in the pivotal study. And as said, the phase 1B patient uh, study uh, with multiple ascending dose is um, ongoing. Uh, we just uh, recently initiated a drug-drug interaction study, and we're also going to, to start a dosing study to complement what we have done previously. And we will also initiate long-term safety studies, all these activities uh, allowing us then to start a pivotal study uh, next year. Moving over to MB354. Uh, this is uh, a completely different um, mode of action, a complementary program in the primary mitochondrial disease uh, space. Um, this is a first in class energy replacement therapy um, to disease modify uh, these type of uh, patients. We're targeting a Lee's syndrome. Um, this is a pediatric indication. Um, patients have very severe symptoms with episodic uh, worsening. Uh, they have progressive uh, degeneration of uh, the brain and its function, which leads to developmental delay, psychomotor regression, and uh, hypotonia. Uh, other organs um, are involved as well, and the overall life expectancy for these children are less than five years. The incidence is some 25 uh, out of a 1 million live births. And um, the program um, is planned to be expanded into other primary mitochondrial diseases such as Elhorn and Milas. 
So NV354 is an energy replacement uh, therapy. It replenishes uh, the energy substrate of complex two that uh, then bypasses the primary defect, which is in complex one of the electron transport chain. Uh, and in doing that, uh, it will actually increase the production of um, energy uh, to the cells and prevent further deterioration of the symptoms of the signs of the drug. The technology is a pro-drug technology which carries succinate from the gut. This is um, an oral treatment, a chronic oral treatment, and succinate is then transported uh, through the gut into the bloodstream and to and rapidly distributed to the uh, target organs, including the brain. Preclinical development is um, ongoing. We're doing safety studies and pharmacological studies and preparing this uh, program um, for an IND, that is um, uh, the approval to initiate clinical trials also with this program uh, next year. So the um, take home messages um, for um, this is uh, Adliva uh, being a near pivotal rare disease asset with the blockbuster potential. Um, we are initiating a pivotal um, study with K1333, a phase two, three study um, next year, and NV354 will be in the clinic 2021 as well. Um, Hadian is a new life science specialist investor and the largest shareholder of the company. And uh, this, uh, we believe, um, validates our program um, even further, and they are an important new uh, board member and have representation at the board of Abliva uh, as well. So with that, um, I'm opening up for, for um, questions, and thank you very much for listening. Thank you, uh, Eric Kinman, for that presentation. Uh, Eric, I would like to start off with the news that you released today uh, with, the, with the positive regulatory feedback from the UK. Can you tell us more about that? I mentioned it very briefly. Uh, uh, this was very um, supportive in that um, it uh, so, sort of um, further validates our program to date. Uh, it also validates our intended program after the feedback that we received from, from the FDA, um, actually building um, the, the arguments and, and the activities um, for, for initiating a pivotal trial um, K1 triple C that will in one step take us from the current stage um, to the possibility of initiating, running and then getting a market approval for, for K1 triple C. Uh, you recently initiated a drug drug uh, interaction study with KL1333. Uh, what does a study like that investigate? Yes, this is very much um, one of the pieces to support the the pivotal study. This study will be running for a 12 month period, and although the, there are no uh, possible treatments for. Uh, these type of patients, they will be on medication for symptoms. Um, I mentioned diabetes, this uh, can be one. Um, these patients all, often all, all also have pain um, and they can suffer from anxiety and uh, depression. And uh, the intention of doing a drug-drug interaction study is that for specific drugs uh, that me uh, are metabolized in certain ways, uh, you want to ensure that our, our drug doesn't interfere with that uh, metabolism and the effect of uh, the drug. So uh, it, it's it's really to to make sure that um, the patients can stay on their current uh, symptomatic uh, medication when we run the pivotal trial and when once we uh, then provided that we're successful, also reach the market. Mm. Uh, what will be the, the next step in the KL1333 uh, project? Yes, uh, to summarize, there's uh, an, a number of, of ongoing activities, obviously. The, the, the mentioned uh, drug-drug interaction study is one. The ongoing phase 1AB study, we're now doing the patient portion. And the first time we're exposing patients, actually, um, with K1333 is also ongoing. Uh, we're doing a patient registry study, so we're looking at patients in a database in uh, the UK um, to look at the 
characteristics of these uh, patients um, and, and further preparing for the uh, pivotal trial as well. And we're going to do a patient interview study to, to refine the um, primary endpoint uh, measure, the patient reported outcome measure that we will use in the pivotal trial as well. Uh, and in addition to that, we're going to uh, start uh, long-term safety studies and we're producing clinical trial material and obviously we're, we will also have continued um, regulatory interactions as well. So there are a lot of uh, exciting things going on. Mm. Uh, just a, a short answer from you, Eric, on the on the last question I have. What milestones do you hope to achieve if we're looking into the 2021? Yes, well, um, very much will be delivering upon the ongoing activities for K1333. Um, secondly, it will be the approval and, and the initiation of the uh, pivotal trial for phase 2-3 for K1333. And in addition to that, delivering the um, results for the ongoing uh, preclinical activities for, for MV354 and moving that program also into clinical development uh, next year. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Eric.